Hey guys, Cronus Falls here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a champion guide on Cold Heart. Now, Cold Heart is one of the most envied champions in all of Raid Shadow Legends. She is a void rare, so not that easy to get as far as champions go, but still not too bad. But if you don't get her, you're going to have a lot more trouble with both the Spider Dungeon and the Fire Knight Dungeon, which are considered two of the hardest dungeons in the game. But she is uniquely qualified to come into both of them for a couple of reasons. So for Fire Knight, you know, you want to come in with those strong uh, multiple hit A1s as well as turn meter reduction. And for Spider, you want lots of strong hitting attacks as well as turn meter reduction. So let's look here for the Fire Knight attacks four times at random. Each hit has a 25% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction debuff for two turns. This is absolutely crazy for the Fire Knight. A four hit A1, obviously when it's just him, all four hits are going to go into him. Knock down that shield. And then heal reduction as well. If he does get to take another turn, that means that he's not going to be able to heal himself. So this ability is just absolutely crazy for fire knight there's not really a better ability in the game the a2 is definitely her weaker point but still a pretty decent ability attacks all enemies has a 30 percent chance of placing a 50 percent decrease accuracy debuff for one turn places a five percent poison debuff for two turns if the target is under a heal reduction so uh nothing crazy i mean she's coming in with an aoe attack Maybe places a poison, maybe places decrease accuracy, nothing special going on here. But her main ability that she's known for, which really brings her up to a different tier in the Spider Dungeon, as well as the Fire Knight, is her Heart Seeker. Now she is one of the few champions in the game who can do damage based on enemy max HP. So attacks one enemy, decreases the target's turn meter by 100%, so a full drop has an extra 30% chance of inflicting a critical hit. So you only have to build her crit rate up to 70% to get full value out of this, which makes her much easier to gear. And damage increases according to enemy max HP, which is huge. Like I said, not many champions in the game do it, and it makes her hit very hard. And this books down to a four turn cooldown, which is not too bad. So let's go ahead and get into the build here. So typically what you want to be going for on a cold heart is speed, crit rate, crit damage, and accuracy. Those are the most important things for her, as well as probably some HP to keep her alive. So I've got her in two sets speed and one broken set here. So the weapon's giving me 14 speed, 12% crit damage, and that's about it. The helmet's coming in here giving me 12% crit damage and 12 speed as well as some attack and defense. The shield coming in here with 10% crit damage, uh, 10 speed, 11 defense, 11% 11 defense. So as you can see these three items right here I did not build any crit rate at all. Which is absolutely crazy because you can get away with that with a cold heart. Because we're coming down here we got the crit damage gloves with 16% crit rate as well as 24 accuracy and 15% HP, very strong gloves. I just wish they were six star and they'd be perfect. I've got a HP percent chest plate. So this is important for her to keep her alive a little bit longer, as well as making sure that she's not getting targeted as often by the enemies. This has a triple roll in crit rate, so 21%, very good with, uh, with uh, 12 accuracy as well, which is nice. A little bit of attack and 6% crit damage, which is also very nice. So this piece was perfect for her. We got crit damage, we got crit rate, we got accuracy. And then the speed boots coming in here with some attack, some defense, 19% crit rate, another triple roll on crit rate. So between just these three items, I was able to get her over the 70% mark that you need. And then I was able to just focus completely on crit damage, which is beautiful. So with the crit damage gloves and the crit damage amulet here, six star and five star, that's already 105% crit damage, which is crazy. And you saw uh, most of these pieces have some crit damage on them as well. So that's what you wanna be doing with her. You wanna make sure that she has enough HP. She's not getting targeted. You wanna make sure that she has good speed, over 200 preferably, but 
I mean, even like 170, 180, you'd be looking pretty good. Crit rate needs to be over 70%, but that is it. And then build as much crit damage as you can and accuracy, you probably want close to the 230 mark. So as far as jewelry goes, I've got her in a defense ring here with good defense and HP rolls. Uh, you do want her to have some defense just so she doesn't fall over like a wet paper towel. Um, see here, I've got her defense at about 1750-ish. Uh, so not crazy, but at least she can take a little bit of a hit. Uh, with the crit damage amulet, I've got her... Uh, I really wish it had rolled accuracy. Or I guess it did. It's a rare, so it just rolled into the accuracy, which is nice. Preferably, you'd have more accuracy on here, though. And then an accuracy banner with some speed, some defense, some attack, and some HP. Again, this banner is absolutely perfect for her. The only way it could be better is if it had rolled more speed. But a beautiful banner. So that is the build, guys. Let's go over the masteries. So you come in here. I actually haven't finished her masteries yet. Um, but I'll tell you why in a second. So uh, you come in here, you get the crit rate, which is very nice. That helps you get over that 70% uh, mark. You got the crit damage, an extra 10%. Uh, heart of Glory increases damage by 5% when attacking with full HP. So that's going to make that Heart Seeker hit a little harder. Coming in here with Single Out increases damage inflicted targets with less than 40% HP. So if you're getting like a second Heart Seeker in on the Spider or something, when it's low, it'll make you do more damage. And bring it down, increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. When you're in a level 20 dungeon, everything has higher max HP than you, so you're doing more damage. Then we're coming in here to Whirlwind of Death, increases speed by 6 for each enemy killed by this champion. So in Spider, you can get some more speed going. Uh, cycle of Violence, 30% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a skill by one turn if the damage inflicted exceeds 30% of target's max HP. So if she's hitting hard enough to do more than the spider's, uh, more than 30% of the spider's max HP, then you could potentially get your Heart Seeker back a little bit faster. Stoke to Fury increases damage inflicted by 4% for each debuff on this champion. So this doesn't really apply for my runs in Spider because she's not taking the hits, but if she was, like you weren't able to get her HP percent high enough, then this would help her to do a little bit more damage when she's got the poisons on. And finally, coming into Flawless Execution, 20% more crit damage. We want her hitting as hard as possible. There is an argument for Helm Smasher as well, but it's just not nearly as consistent a damage. So I'm always going to recommend Flawless Execution on her. And then uh, we're going to come into the support tree here as well, because we want the accuracy. So plus 10 accuracy with the pinpoint. Uh, charge focus, increase accuracy by 20 when he has no skills on cooldown. Now I'm not sure how helpful this one is on Cold Heart because she prioritizes her A2. So you're not really getting the extra accuracy on the Heart Seeker. Uh, but it is what it is. There's not really anything better to take here. And then Swarm Smiter increases accuracy by 4 for each enemy alive. So you get an extra 16 accuracy against the spider all the time because there's always going to be 4 or more enemies alive. Uh, Lore of Steel, I took that to help get her speed up. If you're just using broken sets, you obviously don't want it. But since I've got two speed sets on her, this is very nice. There's also a strong argument to be made for Evil Eye. The reason I didn't take it is because uh, it would only be doing 5% to this main spider, assuming that only one hit her. I think if I think each one of her hits on her A1 will do 5%. So uh, you could go for that if you need just a little bit more turn meter reduction and you're using broken sets, you don't want more of steel. Uh, Cycle of Magic could also be interesting. Maybe get your a uh, what's it called? Heart Seeker back around faster. But it's only 5% chance, so again, not a lot of consistent value there. And then I went ahead and took Sniper. I didn't really need it, uh, just a little bit extra chance to land that heal reduction. Uh, as well as the decreased accuracy, but I don't really care about the decreased accuracy. So basically I just had enough scrolls, so I went into this. Like I said, I didn't actually finish building the Masteries. 
and that's simply because there was nothing else I really cared about. Like maybe I could take kill streak here to increase damage by 3% for each enemy killed by this champion. That could be decent in Spider, but honestly she's not the one killing the Spiderlings, so not a huge deal. I don't care about extending my heal reduction or getting a little bit of extra speed. So I'm just gonna leave her like this. I'm pretty happy with the build. Let's go ahead and get into some dungeon runs. So we're coming in here, like I said, Spider and Fire Knight is where you want to use her. Uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of use out of her anywhere else except maybe Minotaur. Actually, before we do this, I'm going to go ahead and see how she does as a campaign farmer. Now, I did run it once already, and it went pretty well. But I want to show you guys, so let's go ahead and take these guys out, get some new food in there. Alrighty, so... Uh, we're going to come in here and use her as our campaign farmer. As you saw before, her attack is not super high. One issue that you're going to find coming in here, though, is that she doesn't have an aura, so you're going to get that pop-up every time, which is annoying. But she does pretty well here. As you can see, she's already most of the way through at 10 seconds. So she should be able to come in here and finish him off, and we'll be looking at a 17, 16 second farm, which is not bad at all. It is pretty gear intensive though, I mean, this gear is crazy, so if you really uh, are getting to a level where you have this kind of gear, then you probably already have a better campaign farmer. So that being said, she's not the, uh, the best option for that, but she can definitely do it. Now let's get into where she really belongs, which is the Spider and Fire Knight. She can do okay in Dragon as well. I don't really have a team set up that could use her well though, so I don't want to go in there and show her off at kind of a diminished capacity, especially since she's not great for it anyways. We'll go ahead and come into Spider here. And so this is the team that I normally use for Spider. Uh, so let's go ahead we'll start it up and I'll kind of explain what everyone's doing. So we come in here, we've got the Arbiter first. And she's going to go ahead and increase our attack and speed us up. And then miscreated monsters in here for the shields. Then we've got our uh, cold heart here. So what she actually does, the reason that I have her going before Stagnite is because on auto, she'll use her A2. So let's go ahead and watch that. Boom. So about 36k and then Stagnite goes in. He uses his A2 to decrease the attack and defense. And then uh, Ultimate Galax is going to come in here and do his HP burn because he's got the attack up from Arbiter. So we get that on. And so the strategy here is kind of a combination HP burn, AoE, as well as Cold Heart, Heart Seeker, and Turn Meter Reduction. So now our Arbiter is going to come in, speed us up a little bit more. Oh, actually, she goes for the A2 next. That's interesting. And then Miscreated Monster is going to do the A3 for us and give us the ally protection. And now Cold Heart is going to prioritize her Heart Seeker since we've got the decreased defense on and her A2 is on cooldown. She's going to go ahead and get that off for me and boom, as you can see, we've already taken the spider down to close to half health. And she's nowhere near taking a turn yet because of that turn meter drop. So now Stagnite's only got his A1, so he comes in here, he's going to give us a slow speed and a little bit of reduced turn meter from the Evil Eye. So, and that's kind of the strategy here. I'm going to go ahead and throw it back on auto to finish off the fight. Gallic can reduce turn meter. We've got the slow, uh, really slowing down that turn meter. Everyone's got Evil Eye except for Cold Heart. We've got Giant Slayer on these three right here and Helm Smasher on the Miscreated Monster to just kind of increase our shields. And so the important thing that I mentioned before on Cold Heart was getting her HP high enough that she's not taking the hits. So I actually had to nerf my Stagnite a little bit for this setup. I had to bring his HP lower than Cold Heart, so he's down to about 32k, whereas she's at 33k because when she was coming in before, she was taking all these hits and going down before she could get her second Heart Seeker off. But boom, there it is, and that is the end of the fight, guys. So normally this is about a one minute, eight second run, fastest time 104. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run it again and show you guys at full speed kind of how it works. 
it is a pretty quick run. I'm really happy with it. Uh, it took me forever to get good times on Spider, mostly just because I hadn't pulled her. So I was running a double Armager strat for a while. And then once I kind of got this going, I was able to do it with a single Armager, but it wasn't nearly as fast as it is with the Cold Heart doing all this damage. So we're coming in here, we're just decreasing turn meters. Spider's never looking like she's gonna take a turn. We're just burning her away. And everything works perfectly well on auto. So you kind of have to finagle with the team. Like, honestly, my Stagnite and my Ultimate Gallic are not geared out nearly as well as they could be. But that actually helps me to do better on this because uh, it's a form of speed tuning, you know? You need to make sure that everyone's going in the order that you need them to in order to get the fastest and most consistent results. Because when I came in here before and my ultimate Gallic was too fast, he would be using his, uh, his AoE HP burn without the increased attack on so it wouldn't go off. When Stagnite had more HP and was faster, uh, Spiderlings would die too fast and Coldheart would take the attack. So there's really a lot that goes into Spider, but like you can see a minute 11 here, so not bad. It's pretty consistent, usually between 105 and 112. So that's Spider. Let's go ahead and see her here in uh, Fire Knight now. So Fire Knight, like I said, she's very strong because of her four hit A1. So this is the team I normally come in here with. We've got Apothecary, he's got a three hit A1 in speed. Armager is coming in here for some turn meter reduction. Obviously, these two do turn meter reduction as well. But since Armager is on his A1, it's more consistent to start out the fight. Uh, so I, you already know these guys. Rosin's in here for three hit A1 and some turn meter reduction. Two hit A1, decreased defense and decreased speed. So let's get into that here. So unlike Spider, we got waves to go through. And that's where Stagnite really comes in handy because he's got that AOA decreased defense. He's honestly an amazing champion for Spider or for uh, Fire Knight here, as well as Cold Heart. I mean, he's a great addition, and Cold Heart really helped to bring down my times on this dungeon because, as you all probably know, Fire Knight is definitely a dungeon that you're not going to get very quick runs in. I mean, I think even the fastest kind of runs out there are taking a minute 20, which is absolutely crazy. Because other dungeons like Spider, very hard one to progress in, one that a lot of people have trouble with. But if you can get a speed farming setup, you can do it in, I think, like 17 seconds or something. Like 14 seconds maybe even it's just absolutely insane whereas something like fire knight you got to get through these waves you gotta get the uh shield down consistently as you can see we're moving through them here we're looking pretty solid cold hearts just hitting these waves doing some good damage we've got uh, plenty of cc going on here we're dropping turn meter we're getting the decreased defense the weaken the slow uh, decrease attack as well so we're not taking as much damage but man these liches can come in here and take a hit that's for sure so we got that off let's see if we can get the heart seeker perfect so that means when we're coming in here we're not getting those big uh turn meter reduction skills right away there's the four hit a1 so we've already got it down armager knocks down the turn meter so now we just have to wait for the heart seeker to cycle back around and we will be looking pretty solid so the slow is very important from Stagnite here. That is just helping to uh, not let his turn meter build up as fast. There's the Heartseeker, boom, 536k, absolutely insane. Fire Knight doesn't have nearly as much health as Spider does, so that's why the damage number is not as big, but it is just as significant. So here we go, we're coming up on it. I think this is gonna be about a two minute, 20 second run, it looks like. Four hit A1 again. And with that heal reduction, even if he did take another turn, he wouldn't be healing himself. So we got the uh, Heart Seeker off, another 500k damage, 221, not bad for Fire Knight. And so that's what Cold Heart can do for you. Before I had her in here, I was running two Armagers, and it was probably about a three to four minute run each time, which makes farming Fire Knight just an absolute pain going through the tourneys. 
So it's really nice being closer to the two minute time. That was actually my best time with this team. That's funny. Uh, so you got to see it here on video, best time. Normally I'd say it's closer to a two minute 30 second run, but even then that's pretty good for Fire Knight. Uh, not terrible, I'll go ahead and keep that. Yes, yeah, so that's Cold Heart, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that it was useful seeing how to build her, where she's properly used. And uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about her, any ideas for videos I can do in the future. And make sure to subscribe and join the Discord so you can stay in tune for future videos. And thanks.